Good afternoon. This is the April 27th, 2016 meeting or hearing of the Assembly Committee on Utilities and Commerce. Uh, we have, uh, I see one of our authors there, but let's go ahead and establish a quorum. Gatto. I'm here. Patterson. Here. Burke. Chavez. Here. Daly. Here. Eggman. Christina Garcia. Here. Eduardo Garcia. Hadley. Here. Roger Hernandez. Obernolte. Here. Quirk. Here. Santiago. Here. Ting. Williams. Here. Okay, I see our first author has been patiently waiting. That is Ms. Lopez. Ms. Lopez, welcome. Ms. Lopez, the floor is yours. You are presenting Assembly Bill 2795. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Today I'm pleased to present AB 2795, which will be stop telephone companies for charging a fee to their customers to keep their phone numbers private. Today, the privacy is became more important than all, almost everything else. In recent years, we have passed privacy legislation to make sure to that our constituents feel their, their information is secure. In fact, the Assembly has gone as far as, far as a created a privacy committee because of how important it is in the world to be living today. The opposition say that the phone numbers are public, so people are available to talk to each other. I believe that was true years ago, but not today. AB 2795 brings up bigger question. Is privacy a luxury? Should be privacy only give it to those who can pay for it? Or should be for everyone? Right to have privacy. If you, you believe privacy should only give to the, those who can pay extra fee, they both know. But if you believe that privacy is right for everybody, should be both, both yes. Thank you very much. And today I have to uh, witness and support. Okay, let's go to your first witness and support. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Ignacio Hernandez on behalf of the Utility Reform Network, and we are the uh, sponsor of the measure. I want to thank you for taking the time today to look at this bill. Um, there are a lot of parts to this bill, and it's a straightforward but yet somewhat complicated issue. So I'm hoping to kind of take broad strokes and really kind of break it down. This bill is about is addressing the issue of privacy and the ability of consumers to have their home phone numbers and the associated home address private without having to pay a fee. And we're taking, you know, we're addressing this bill this year having the benefit of looking at what has happened since deregulation. And so there are a few things that I'm going to talk about. One is since deregulation in 2006, there are two fees that have been charged to consumers, and I'll explain in just a second, both of which have increased exponentially. One fee has increased over 900 percent since 2006. The other thing that, that we have to look at is that these telecom companies, their responsibilities have changed over the years. You're going to hear about phone directories, but many of these phone companies have permission to no longer print white pages which saves them money, and instead rely on online phone directories. And yet, even though these phone directories are not available or are not automatically printed, consumers are still paying a fee, and they're paying a higher fee than they did years ago. Let me, let me talk about the two fees, and I'm going to have a handout of that I forgot to give to the sergeants. The first fee has to do with directory assistance, and there's a lot of confusion about what we're exactly paying. Back in 2006, the fee was about 14 cents a month for an individual to have his or her home phone unlisted. And by reference, we're talking about 411 directory assistance. And I'm so this is the service where if you call 411 and you ask for somebody's phone number, if you did not want your phone number available there, you would pay this fee. 
and that was just before deregulation. Today, the fee varies, but the opposition has stated it's $1.50 a month ongoing to have your phone number unlisted. That is a significant increase since 2006, so that's one fee. We've heard it as high as $2.25. The other thing to keep in mind is that you used to be able to call 411 for free, at least three calls for free from AT&T, and you would only be charged a very small amount of money, if anything, if you went over that amount. Now, the charge to call 411 is anywhere from $1.99 to $2.75 each call. So we have a directory assistance program where consumers are paying more than they did 10 years ago, exponentially more, to have their number unlisted. And if you do call it, you're being charged exponentially more. That is a problem. And again, this isn't necessarily, you know, nece it isn't necessary to have this, this directory in the way that they have it set up. Second part is whether or not someone's unpublished, and that is online and in the print directory. And as I stated, some companies are already abandoning the white pages and automatic white pages, and yet the fee continues. And that fee, as you'll see on the other side of the, of the page, that fee has increased from about 28 cents in 2006 up to between 150 and about 275 a month ongoing. And according to the opposition, they oftentimes charge consumers a one-time fee when you transition from listed to unlisted. And this applies across the board to everyone. We have been hearing these complaints from consumers. At turn, at turn we hear from consumers all the time about it. There have been newspaper articles, there have been television stories about it. Uh, there were just recently the Manteca Bulletin, less than an hour away from here, the, the editor wrote an op-ed complaining about it. This is an ongoing complaint that we hear all the time. So it's time to finally address this head on and to say it's that privacy should not be held up in exchange for a fee that is really unjustified. Let me just close by saying two things. One is the research that we have done on what the actual cost of this, calling it nominal would say that it's act, that would actually be an overstatement, okay? It is below nominal. We already pay for the databases. Each and every one of us, listed or not, pays for the databases of consumers. Each and every one of us pays for the directory that is available for 411. We already pay for all of that. Flagging an individual in the database to be unlisted takes exactly this long. That's it. And it doesn't need to be done every month. And it doesn't need to be done year after year after year. So the fee that the fee has significantly outpaced the cost. So we're asking that it, to get rid of this fee, consumers should no longer be, be required to pay a privacy fee. We don't pay a privacy fee with just about every other technology out there, and yet the phone companies continue to charge and they continue to increase this fee. Uh, I know there will be a lot of questions and I'm available to answer those, thank you. Terrific, next witness. Good afternoon, Chair and members. My name is Aaron Lewis with the Consumer Federation of California. Um, we're in very strong support of the bill. Um, privacy is a very critical issue for consumers. CFC has found that across many uh, policy areas, consumers desire uh, privacy protections from financial data to health information uh, or any other personally identifiable information. Uh, according to Pew Research, 93% of adults say that being in control of who can get their information is important to them. Contrary to what the opposition claims, home phone numbers and the associated address uh, can in fact be critical keys to protecting privacy. Uh, some consumers may not mind having their numbers listed, uh, but many are very strongly motivated to protect this key privacy point. This was highlighted recently uh, when Comcast uh, published more than 74,000 unlisted f home phone numbers. Uh, of customers who were, had paid to delist their phone numbers and addresses. Uh, the, in the course of the investigation through this case, uh, it gave us a glimpse into some of the reasons why Californians choose to hide their phone numbers. Um, and I have an article that um, can pass to the sergeants. Thank you. One customer complained that, to the FCC that he chose an unlisted number because he had testified in a murder trial. Others had domestic violence or personal safety issues which motivated their interest in having an unlisted number. Consumer Federation believes that whatever the reason for choosing privacy, it should be an available choice and it should not come at a cost. Uh, 
Phone companies are the only ones to charge consumers for privacy. So I thank you and I ask for your support for the measure respectfully. Thank you. Terrific. Uh, any members of the public who wish to be heard on this bill, please step forward. Good afternoon. Brandon Epp with the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department in support. And I apologize we didn't get our letter in on time. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, let's go to witnesses in opposition. Thank you. Uh, good, good afternoon, members, Mr. Chairman, to the author. My name is Bill Devine, and I represent AT&T. As you might suspect, we're here today to oppose AB 2795. Allow me to start by correcting a couple of points in the proponent's fact sheet. First, they claim the charges for uh, non-published service can run as high as $7, specifically at AT&T. That is incorrect. Uh, for a non-pub line, it is $1.75. Secondly, telephone numbers are not and have never been a privacy issue. In fact, in the, nine, in the last nine proceedings, when various issues related to phone numbers and non-pub and non-listed issues were before the PUC from 1984 through 2012, no one, including the proponents of this bill, have raised this issue as a privacy issue. It has never been debated at the Public Utilities Commission. So if it is such a pressing issue, you would think it would have come up previously. It is the policy of the state of California that telephone numbers are public. In fact, as recently as 2012, our Public Utilities Commission reaffirmed in the basic service definition the fact that phone numbers must be made public through directory services. Both the public policy and the practice, both in California and at the FCC, for decades have promoted the telephone number and the telephone network as a means for citizens' communication and economic development throughout this country. The value of the network is built on two-way communications, and it is essential that consumers have access to telephone numbers. Now, you might realize that in today's society, with the advent of new technologies such as wireless, technology has changed, but that technology has not affected the plain old telephone service network. To promote the goal, the PUC in California requires free white page listings, free inclusion in directory assistance, the 411 network, and free white page directories be available to all consumers. Over the past three decades, as I mentioned a moment ago, the PUC has issued nine separate actions related to non-pub, and privacy has never been part of that debate. Further, in, those, in eight of those nine proceedings, the proponents of this bill actually did not even object to charging for non-pub. And I can go back to 1997 in a particular case when a telephone corporation requested that the non-pub charge be eliminated and put into their general charges. The proponents of this bill objected and the PUC agreed with them. So the non-pub charge stayed in place. Consumers who want to limit access to phone numbers have choices. First and foremost, the wireless network does not publish directories. Further, consumers can choose at no charge to limit their directory listing. They can use initials. They can eliminate their address, eliminate their name, but only include their phone number. Consumers can choose at no charge call blocking. And consumers can, char can choose at no charge the uh, federal do not call registry. Finally, I will say that at AT&T, as well as we believe at the PUC, this issue has not generated complaints from consumers. I suspect that most of you, probably all of you, have not been hearing from your constituents that there is a big concern about charges for non-pub or some concern about the privacy here. So, Mr. Chairman, let me stop there, thank the members for their attention. We would urge a no vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness. 
Carolyn McIntyre on behalf of the California Cable and Telecommunications Association. Also uh, opposed to the bill uh, for the reasons uh, stated by Mr. Devine. I will add, however, uh, speaking directly to a point that was made here earlier with regards to uh, Comcast having uh, published unlisted numbers. I think that's a prime example of why special handling and processing of unpublished numbers is in fact necessary. There are huge consequences to be paid by customers uh, from a regulatory standpoint to the extent that you accidentally publish information that someone has requested not be published. So I believe it is appropriate um, for us to be able to charge and to recover the cost associated with doing those ongoing audits and that special handling of that type of information. Thank you. Terrific. Uh, members of the public who wish to testify against. Chair and members, Ashley Satude with Nossiman on behalf of Consolidated Communications in opposition for reasons previously stated. Thank you. Anybody else who wishes to be heard in this bill? Let's bring it back to the committee. Uh, questions or comments from the committee? Uh, Ms. Garcia. Um, and actually, I would like an answer from Mr. Devine. We talked about, you talked about wireless phones and that those are unlisted. Uh, in your statement, you also talked about the two-way communications, which I think would apply to wireless phones. The reality that we're in now is that less of us have landlines and we're moving into that wireless phone. So wouldn't your argument then be able to apply to the wireless phone or so that they should be published or take that same protection we have in, for landlines and have them be unpublished? I mean, this while traditionally we've been doing this directory, I don't see its purpose anymore of, of having it even uh, if, if we're moving in the direction of wireless to begin with. Um, Thank you, Assemblywoman. Uh, that was a lot of question. Let me try to get to, to the to a couple of items. I, uh, I guess basically, why should we have yeah. two, a two a two tier system? Why do we treat wireless differently than landlines? Right. If they're and, about communications, two way communications. Right. To to address the the uh, the, the the latter point. Uh, in terms of uh, why are we publishing telephone numbers at all. As recently as 2012 in the basic service order from the Public Utilities Commission, they took three years from 2009 to 2012 to examine all of the basic service obligations. And the proponents of this bill strongly endorsed the conclusion, which was publish telephone numbers. They endorsed it. Um, secondly, with regard to wireless, wireless has grown up as a different technology in a different time. You might recall, although it's been a while ago, that in the old days, wireless calls, you were, the recipient of the phone call was charged when you called the recipient. So one of the arguments for not having directories was they didn't want telemarketers to have access to those phone numbers so that they could literally call you for free to sell you things while your uh, uh, service charges went up. The second issue, and the reason we don't need directories for wireless, uh, is that wireless devices today are smart devices. And so they are able to capture the phone number. You are able to build your own directory inside the device itself, whether it be online or in your pocket. And so you have complete access to the phone numbers you wish to get. And third, through the smartphone and flip phone devices today, you can gain access to virtually any phone number by going online and looking at online directories. So those technologies don't actually exist in the old POTS network. And so as a result, this new dynamic wireless service does not need directories because you're able to get all the same services through the technology. The POTS lines, if you believe in the basic service definition, would continue to need access to phone numbers, although that is diminishing. And if it's a topic that needs to be discussed, this bill does not address that issue. But your statement was that it's a two-way communication and that's why these phones are published and so it's in the same argument about wireless phones that's a two-way communication. And I don't, if someone calls me, yes, I get to store that number if I want, but I actually don't have access to all the numbers that I want because that assumes that everyone I want has called me at some point. And that's not true. <laughs> I, had I, I would not argue with you on that point. <laughs> I hope they all call soon. <laughs> Okay, let's go to Mr. Hadley, followed by Mr. Quirk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Lopez, I, um, I'm very sympathetic. Thank you for bringing the bill forward. And I 
am very sympathetic to the privacy issue, although I disagree on the, the, the route you're taking to get there. Um, we, we do not have any longer in California uh, state-regulated rate, uh, rates for wireline services, and I don't think it's a productive exercise for this chamber or for the legislature to start to mandate rates or cap rates or ban rates on individual features of the phone, the bundle of services that carriers are offering to consumers in the marketplace. So if you know, the, these folks are all, the carriers are paying for their networks in many different ways with different revenue streams, charging different customers for different services that those customers value. If we cap this fee or eliminate this fee, we will see other fees and other services. This is, this is the game of uh, consumers and, and, uh, and vendors uh, working out economic arrangements that are mutually agreeable. So I'm not a, a fan of banning or capping this fee. However, I think your point about privacy and the right to control your phone number in 2016 is a very relevant concern that I share. And I think that if we were designing our system today, uh, there would probably be three parts to it. Uh, you know, when you established a phone service and you, uh, you signed up with a carrier and had a number assigned, that number would go into a database that would be uh, made available to public safety. There would be a mandatory public safety database uh, that I believe would exist, uh, uh, and that your default option on your number would be non-disclosure, that you would have a privacy right in your number. I do think that, that the value that we place on privacy in the technological world we live in is very different than than how that right was valued when, when the original phone system was developed. So that uh, people would not be opting into a non-disclosed number. They would be uh, choosing if they wanted to have their number released to third parties. So I'm, I'm very sympathetic to trying to change this from an opt-out to an opt-in to disclosure. Uh, that's a bigger and a different exercise. I don't know if it's bigger, but it's a very different exercise. But I do believe, and, and I think this is an important issue for this committee, I do believe that we should be moving toward a world where consumers control their phone numbers and they have a privacy right in those phone numbers. Uh, and, uh, and I think we should change the, the state mandates and the PUC uh, legislative framework around that issue. But I don't think the right way to go there is by banning or by capping prices for individual features. So I'm, uh, I'm not going to vote on this bill today. Uh, but if, uh, if there is a way to work on the privacy goal here without trying to regulate one aspect of a service fee, then uh, I would be interested in that. Thank you, Mr. Hadley. Um, I forget who was next, if it was Mr. Quirk or Mr. Williams. Okay, uh, let's let's go to Miss. Okay, Mr. Quirk. Um, we'll, we'll get through that door. Um, well, Mr. Hadley, I think made some good points. This is an unregulated market, and people can go to different services. Uh, I do want to uh, point out that I had one of my staff members check to see how much AT and T charged for an unlisted number. And your operations have given you the wrong number. He was told that the number that it was going to be three to five dollars a month, and then he gave him his address, and they said, "Oh, for that address, it's three dollars a month." Um, so you know, and apparently it varies with address. But I agree with Mr. Hadley. We do have an unregulated system, and where there's still monopolies, the PUC does in fact. Uh, determine prices, but that's not where we are now. I don't think I can support an across-the-board um, change in the system. I am willing to look at a narrowed system where, for example, if someone had a police report that they had been abused or had a court-ordered restraining order, uh, perhaps for police officers, I'm not quite sure um, what that restricted um, version of your bill might be. Um, 
but uh, I would very much, um, uh, Assembly Member Lopez, uh, like to hear if there is a possibility that you'd look for a restricted version of what you're uh, doing now. Um, yes, I'm open and willing to work with um, different parties involved and uh, before the bill get into the floor. All right, so I'll reserve my vote on the floor, but I'll make a motion uh, to uh, uh, move the bill right now. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the panel? Oh, I'm sorry, I, Mr. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> It's the looseness of the tie, Mr. Williams. Oh, man, I thought, you'd, I thought you'd just be happy I was wearing one. <laughs> Santa Barbara. Um, you know, I am uh, extremely uh, uh, conflicted by this bill. I really think that the author is on the right track here, that it is obvious to me that consumers are being overcharged for this service, especially since, you know, we don't really know how much the service Costs. Uh, there's there's been a wide n amount of different numbers bantied about, and uh, you know even when Mr. Quirk's office really did you know the brilliant thing and actually checked, um, it conflicted with with uh, the numbers that we've been given. Uh, but I also don't think it's without cost for uh, the providers. I mean there there is a pr uh, amount of time at least even if it's a matter of 30 to seconds to a minute on the part of staff and mm -hmm. staff have training costs and all sorts of other things. So there, there is obviously a cost. And so uh, I would be a whole lot more comfortable with a bill um, that says, look, you know, if this was a regulated market, we just did tell the PUC to, to, to determine what it is. This is a deregulated market. So we kind of just have to make a call mm -hmm. and just say, hey, it's a dollar. End mm -hmm. of story. Right or whatever, whatever, whatever that number may be. Um, I I am curious about your idea, Mr. Headley. How would that be different than what her bill already does? Her bill essentially allows you to opt in or opt out without being charged for it. Isn't that what you just said you supported? I guess we're question. We, we, if you yeah, want to, I mean, it's that, a, he doesn't have to that's answer fine. it, but it is. Uh, a, I mean, this I, is a hearing. I, I, uh, it, it, I, I think that's what her bill says. So I, I, I was just trying to trying to. It's up to you, Mr. Hadley. I'll I'll be very quick. I don't think, as a legislative matter, we should be setting prices for individual features. I think that the the architecture of the databases that are created for public safety and for general public are are different, and they are supervised and audited and managed differently in an opt out versus an opt in system. Uh, and we can speak more about that offline if it's if it's of interest. Terrific. Let's go to Mr. Ting. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm also uh, very torn on the bill as well, um, and I uh, very much applaud the author. I think for the in for the intent that you're doing. Um, I wanted to. I did want to ask both parties because I, I know I had conversations with both both of you regarding this issue of, of privacy. I understood from Mr. Devine that. Legally, there is a legal obligation to make these numbers public, um, and that there is a um, obviously a cost involved to taking them out of the public. And so, um, going back to I, I believe the proponents' privacy issue, could you could you walk us through your your privacy argument um, again and understanding why why shouldn't the uh, companies get compensated for that for that particular cost. Do do the chair or oh, oh, the author? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse. No, that's fine. I'm just looking for the chair. Um, if I if I may respond, Mr. Uh, Patterson. Mr. Oh, Patterson. There you are. Okay. Sorry. I apologize. I wasn't. I didn't see a gavel. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, some member team for the question. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, all consumers right now pay for the essentially the, the universal database and the technology to store all of the numbers. So I think that sometimes that's overlooked, um, that if you're listed, you are already paying inherent in your charges to cover all the technology and staff and everything else. 
So the delta or the, the difference between the work that is done to actually unlist somebody we think is minimal. Uh, and I think I said nominal or even less than nominal because the technology is already there, the database is already there, the flagging of individuals for a variety of reasons is already occurring. In fact, there's an article, I'm not sure if we disseminated, from uh, a consultant who actually created the database for Verizon, if I'm not mistaken. And he, he was quoted in the article as stating exactly that, that he created the database and the time it took and additional work it took was virtually nothing because of all of the other work. Also indicated that the information is shared in other ways already. So to single out that one moment of flagging for this purpose was really difficult to do and difficult to quantify. So I think that was your question as far as, far as the cost. Let me, so let me just, just close by saying, if we're already paying for the cost, if you're listed, we view this as you're getting hit with a second cost to be unlisted. Because if you're listed, you're paying for the database. So let's say I'm listed. Tomorrow I decide to go unlisted. I'm now going to pay between $3 and $5 a month ongoing simply because they flagged me. And that's where we struggle because it isn't a new database, it isn't new technology, it isn't new staff that needs to be hired. It's inherent in, in the structure that's already there. So, so Mr. Vi, I guess the proponents are, are intimating that the, the cost of the database is already within the the flat fee charge already and that there's not really much of a charge to take us off the list if we so choose. Is that is that your understanding as well? Do uh, you agree with that? Mr. Ting, no, we do not agree with that. Uh, uh, we're sort of going down a, a, a debate item that uh, I know Turn would like to go down. Uh, the fact of the matter is in 1984, the California Public Utilities Commission uh, basically deregulated services uh, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Now, they maintain basic service definition and obligations, which includes publishing mm -hmm. the phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, the proponents are arguing this is a privacy issue. Well, if it's truly a privacy issue, this bill should ban the publishing of all telephone numbers. That would be the essence of the privacy issue. They're not choosing to do that. They support publishing the numbers, but then you get a little whiplash because now they're saying if you want the special service, which the Public Utilities Commission authorized in 1972, mm -hmm. reiterated in 1984, quote, this is a value of service, not a cost of service, product available to consumers. So if consumers want to opt out of the state policy, we've created a multi-level mechanism that includes both free as well as a fee for service charges. There's two fees for service and three aspects which I articulated previously that are free. So this is not price regulation in the traditional sense. This would be as if we're pulling a thread out of someone's sports jacket and saying, we don't like this color so we're taking it out but the rest of it will remain unregulated. It is very selective rate regulation, which I might add, our own Public Utilities Commission, in nine separate occasions since 1984, has had the opportunity to deal with, TURN has had the opportunity to intervene in every case, and has not objected to non-pub, has let those decisions move forward without any objections, and move forward without any debate around privacy. So, we do disagree. There is a charge, and, and as Carolyn pointed out, there are significant mm -hmm. penalties if you fail to fulfill your responsibility and accidentally make a mistake and release someone's number. You will be subject to penalties. You'll be subject to litigation as well as subject to brand embarrassment when it hits the papers. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lot at risk here, and it's important we get it right. The last item, customers have choices. If you don't want to pay for anything, you can go to a wireless service. You have the other options we have available, and there are multiple carriers with multiple pricing available. So thank you very much. Thank you. So I guess going, going back to my question for, for you, Mr. Hernandez, is that um, you know where, where I face the challenge is looking at, um, again, we talked about this earlier, f focusing on this particular cost in particular while we don't look at any of the costs. That, I think that presents sort of a 
a challenge. So I don't know if you want to address that particular issue. Well, well, a couple of things, Th and thank you, Assembly Member Ting. A uh, couple of things. One is, and I appreciate the question on cost. I, I don't know that I heard a response from the opposition about the cost, which was, I think, the focus of your your question. Um, if I may, they also brought up Turn's position, which I imagine some people may may be curious about if they cited some prior um, decisions, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Let me just clarify. The opposition just stated and referenced uh, proceedings in front of the CPUC that occurred, I think almost every single one of them, uh, at a time when rates were regulated. And the fee for this service was about 14 to 20, 28 cents a month. So if they want to have a conversation about Turn's position and think that we should be consistent, if they want to re-regulate rates and drop the prices back down to 14 or 28 cents a month, we're happy to have that conversation. I imagine they wouldn't like that as an amendment into the spill. So I think they're comparing not only apples to oranges, but apples to redwood trees. Very, very different. As far as your question is why we identify this one, in part because it isn't necessarily the foundation of the service itself. This is not making phone service available in every area, you know, you know uh, urban, rural, you know, we've had lots of discussions in this committee about that. That's not what this is about. This is simply about, well, we're putting you in this directory, and if you so choose, you can get out of it, but only for a cost. And there is no other similar fee that telecom charges to consumers. There's no other one. Everything else is a service or a product or some other feature that you get an actual add-on, a delta. You get additional value because you are, have caller ID blocked, which is free. Uh, you can do call forwarding, which is a cost, but it's a new feature. Something added to your actual phone service. This is simply, we will delete you from this directory. We will make, not make your number available at 411. Though we'll charge your friend if they're calling 411 to find your number. So it's inherently different. Um, and so we understand going back to regulating. We don't want that. We don't want to go back to the CPUC and kind of do re-regulation. We simply want to take this as it is, which is a not, not an additional service, not an addi additional feature, but simply holding up the privacy for individuals who have legitimate reasons uh, to w withhold that na their name and address. So uh, hopefully that answers it. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ting. Let's go to Mr. Obernolte, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think this discussion has catalyzed an interesting issue, which is uh, the issue on one hand of protection of privacy, because that's something that this committee and our legislature in the last couple of years, it's been a strong topic of discussion for us. So in that sense, it is abhorrent that someone would have to pay to protect their privacy. But as Assemblyman Hadley said, we no longer regulate these rates. So I want to follow up on what you were just talking about, about d paying for different features, because uh, I, I don't think that, uh, I think what you heard uh, Mr. Devine say was the, the consumer is paying for value. They're not paying for the cost of the service to be rendered. And so you can point at a lot of different features in the bill and make the same argument that you're making about this particular one. So what's, what's special about this particular feature that warrants our attention? Because I don't think any of us want to go back to the day where we're regulating the cost of every feature on a phone bill. understand. Thank you for the question. Um, a few things. One is victims of domestic violence, you know, and, and these are just real stories that we've been hearing, right? Why, they choose, why consumers choose to have their number unlisted, okay? You're talking about victims of domestic violence. You're talking about law enforcement officials. Um, oftentimes you're talking about uh, someone like we heard earlier, someone who was a witness um, to a crime. They don't have those same challenges when it comes to, you know, not speed dialing, but call forwarding or anything else. There's something inherent to privacy which is not implicated by the other features. Okay, um, none of those if, folks if are... If you wanted to, you could have put in the bill to, to make con protecting the privacy of those individuals compulsory. But that's not what the bill says. The bill says everybody. That, that's right, because we believe fundamentally that, one, there's really not an additional cost. Two, the value of privacy and the ability – look, a couple of other things. One thing that's left out by the opposition is that there are increasing ways to opt out of having your number in a directory, right? They're already trying to adjust for that. You, now you ask – if you don't want a directory, you, you can opt in to receiving a directory. So what's going on is that there is something that they are providing and charging for 
that the service is now being diminished. They're not even having to do as much as they used to do and they're still charging the fee. And the difference with this fee is that it, there is a nexus for a lot of folks over a safety issue or over some other privacy issue that is not, it's simply not involved with, with call forwarding. It's simply not involved with uh, voicemail or other features. So I understand we don't want, you want to be very careful about going down the road of re-regulating every fee and every feature. I completely understand that. And I'm not sure how else to describe other than give you a laundry list of the privacy issues that the consumers raise whenever we talk to them about this fee and they realize that they have to pay this fee. It's like, well, wait a minute. Why I should have that option without having to pay. They understand having to pay if there's some additional service that they're getting out of it. Sure, I understand. But we did this to them because the way the phone system was originally designed mm -hmm. is that uh, the, it was compulsory for the carriers to provide it, the information. It, the, uh, last thing, Mr. Chair, I understand that also happened when rates were regulated. And so it was a little bit of a different universe. So these rates were regulated. The overall phone rates were regulated. So it's somewhat of a different discussion. I mean, I mean to be honest with you, that all, that all occurred when we, gave, when we created that obligation, when we created all of these responsibilities, when it was looked at. That was all when rates were regulated. Now, we're, we're not going there with this bill. We're simply saying well, in light of deregulation and in light of how this privacy fee has been handled and has increased by 900%, since deregulation 10 years ago, that it has now crossed the line and that the value of privacy to consumers is so important that this is simply not a fee that we can allow to spiral out of control anymore. And that's our position and you know, it's, it doesn't fit in a nice box, but it is our position. Yeah, well I mean it's- I appreciate the questions. Uh, that, that's what I find troubling right. is trying because I on the privacy issue I think you'll probably get no disagreement here on the panel because we we've dealt with this issue time and time again with bills that have come before us in, in the last two years but right. uh, the fact that we no longer regulate those rates and the fact that we're not having the discussion about uh, first responders we're not having the discussion about uh, about victims of domestic violence rather than discussion about everybody and the fact that we're not having the discussion about whether or not that information should be public because that's part already part of law they're already required to do that. So, uh, you know, I, I think those are the, the troubling portions of the bill. So I want to consider, uh, I want to commend you, uh, Assemblywoman, to, for bringing the bill forward. I want to encourage you to, to keep working on it. I won't be able to support it today, but I think it's a conversation that should be had. Uh, I just am concerned with some of these larger issues. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Daly. So I have a little bit of a different question. Um, so I have one provider. I don't have the option to go to other providers in where I actually live, and I have very poor cell service at my home, so I have a landline, which is very important to me. Who sets the rate where you have no option to go to uh, other? Is that the C, the PUC sets that rate, and is that rate for those, or are they unregulated and they can charge me whatever, and I have no other option to go anywhere else? The, the rates, as I understand it, are not regulated. And it, regardless of, of uh, where you live in the state of California. Okay, any other questions or comments? I just have a quick question, and that is, um, you know, they often say in Silicon Valley that, uh, that if you don't know what the product is, and uh, if it appears to be free, then chances are the product is you. Um, is this a circumstance where it costs the industry lost opportunity by not having that public data to sell or is this something where you know it's it's just simply a service uh, that's provided something that is wanted and people are willing to pay for it yeah yeah sure any anybody um the uh the telephone companies that uh, collect the numbers are prohibited from uh, uh using those databases for marketing or for sales now we are required uh, we are required uh, to, as I mentioned earlier, publish the numbers, both in the free white page listing as well as inclusion in directory assistance and the distribution of books. So but that's we'll essentially add, a government requirement. That's a government requirement. The government also requires <coughs> because um, because directories, publishing directly directories is a competitive business.
Right. We are required to make those numbers available to directory publishers at cost. And they are specifically prohibited from marketing as well. So if you're in the directory publishing <coughs> business, you can get the numbers from a telephone company. We s give them to you at, the co at cost, but they are also prohibited in the contract from using those numbers as a marketing device to upsell you on other services. Their sole mission would be to publish directories and distribute directories. I understand. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, so the bill has been moved, but but uh, Ms. Lopez, I think that um, based on my counting, and uh, it doesn't seem like the votes are there uh, today, so maybe the thing that I would suggest is to put this over and continue working on it. Uh, we're more than happy to, uh, you know, to the extent that you're able to come with a compromise and you feel comfortable moving forward before the deadlines, we're more than helpful, uh, happy to accommodate that. But what I would suggest, it doesn't sound like the votes are there today. If that's okay with you, we can sort of put the bullet bill over and continue to work on it. Yes. Okay. All right. Terrific. So we'll withdraw that motion. I withdraw. All right. Wonderful. Uh, Terrific. Thank you, everybody.